Hey guys, okay, we're back. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, it is now night and I don't have any natural light coming into the bedroom. Uh, I have just posted the video on how to make the gel print leaves. And I'll just show you a few bits and pieces. So I've cut out all of the gel printed leaves and inked the edges now. So they're all ready to go. Out of the bits that were around the leaves, I didn't want to waste those, so I cut out a whole lot of, because I want to do a ring bound binder, a whole lot of little eyelet holes to reinforce the holes on each page. I also kept some bits because I can always put those into collage. I made some cut out some tabs to use as part of the tabs on the side and making little fussy paper clip removable tags and I even have kept these bits that I cut the little hole reinforcers out of because they would look really cute and textural in the collages or clusters or whatever as well okay so I feel like we've made the most that was only I got all of that out of one A4 gel print I have still kept this one as is because as I said I want to give that one a scan so for this we've just got the leftover grungy bits on the plate we're going to use pretty much all the same materials as the last video so have a look at episode four of my victorian album project and just at the beginning i go through all the materials and bits and pieces that you would use um, and need to have on standby to do some gel printing the only difference is this time i have we call these chucks cloths in new zealand and it's just damp not wet just damp and you'll see why i need to use that and I've got a whole bunch of stencils as well. And all, all of them from Timu. So cheap as chips. And I will just use them completely at random. But they do have a bit of a theme. They're all kind of patterns. Floral or lacy or... See there? The kind of things. Flourishy. <laughs> I'm just making up words now. <laughs> it's all right. And I'm just going to use them completely at random. Some with the words and text. Well, look like text. I don't think you can actually read it. So I've just got a nice big variety of bits and pieces that I'm going to use. There's a faux text one. And we'll just, I just go for it, really. I don't pay all that much attention to it so all you're going to have to think about is do you want it for example I want it mostly light I don't want too much brown so I'm probably going to do if I use stencils like this I'm going to want the brown on there and I'll show you that this one may not come out so fantastically because I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks of what I do so, my bray has gone yeek. walkabouts. So, sometimes I just do it in sections. So, I might just do a little bit down here. Although, I would like to balance it. I wouldn't only want one piece on there. Uh, you can, I'll show you actually, you can use your scrap paper to remove some of the ink from the inside of the stencil I find it doesn't usually get in there as much as I would like and I really like having the pattern show quite a bit because now that I've done this layer once that dries I can put more paint onto this layer and everywhere I've wiped it away that color paint is going to come through again Put me on mute if you are a seasoned gel printer because I would be teaching you how to suck eggs here. 
and you could probably get away with just watching rather than listening to my waffling. Now, this is still a relatively new gel plate as well, so it's going to do whatever it wants, and in some places I would say the texture of the paint is almost going to separate. That seems to be what it does when it's a brand new gel plate. So we'll just pierce it there. So I'll just take some of that ink off as much as I can onto the paper, otherwise I'm going to end up needing to use 50 chucks cloths. Oh, whoops, I moved that one. Don't know what's going to happen there. Right, wipe away that. Now this layer I would, I will dry before I put on anything else. If you are watching this because you saw my green uh, prints that I did for episode 3 of the Victorian Album Project, feel, oh my goodness, what a mess. Just go with it. <laughs> Let's just do that and see how it comes out. <laughs> If you did are watching this because you'd watched um, that other when I was just showing you through a few of the gel prints that I created and realized that I hadn't filmed anything I have scanned those and put them up on my Etsy so if you would like to use those you could print them double-sided on some cardstock and then you would be able to make some green fussy cut leaves okay so I'm just going to pause this while I quickly give it a dry okay there we go touch dry so next method that I sometimes use and I might get a couple of these bigger ones is a different way of stenciling so this way I'm going to use the negative space on this stencil whereas in the opposite one um, I did it the other way around so I might pop, oh, I can't really get it just so that it's on the corner, that one. Alright, just let me faff for a bit while I find the other one I was thinking of. Beauty with acrylic paint is that you can leave the acrylic paint on the stencils and if you give them a bit of soak and warm water for a while the acrylic paint gets all rubbery and you can actually just rub it off which is great just move you down a little bit so that I can fit that guy in there hopefully it won't move too much ideally you want it so that it's not stencil on stencil you want it so that you've got a nice clear space but we're just gonna have to roll with it now one thing you do need to remember is you are going to need a nice light layer at the end to pull this off and if you did these in the white and then use it to obviously pull it off you're not going to see these anymore so what I might do um, I might mix up a little little bit of brown and white or brown and the unbleached titanium so that I can get a little bit more of a coverage and so that it's a, a lighter color a bit more of a contrast you might notice that I say um, a lot. I do that a lot more when I'm doing a tutorial than a flip through. So I do apologize for that. I am trying to work on it but it's just one of those things because I have social anxiety. I've got a hundred things going on in my head. Oh, I hope I said that right. I hope I explained that well enough. Is that going to work out? Am I going to have to refilm this? That thoughts and being able to craft at the same time <laughs> it's a bit of a mission so I do apologize I am aware of it I do try to do my best not to I hope you guys will forgive me for my ums and my ahs so you really do need to put quite a bit of paint on there just so that you can get it into those stencil parts because we are using 
a brayer that is just going to go over the top. I often also use my finger just to get a little bit more paint into the places just so that you get a bit of a clearer stencil. Another beauty of acrylic paint washes off your hands really easily. Sometimes it's quite nice to have some solid parts and some bits that didn't come out as clearly as well. You just don't want to put too much of a blob in there. I hope this is helpful, even if you do have me on mute. If you don't have me on mute, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you're going to give this a go. Uh, feel free to join in my bio. There's a link to a Facebook page I created. Basically, I just created it because so many of you uh, say in the comments, oh, thank you so much, I'm going to try that, which is brilliant. But you can't then post a picture onto the comments on YouTube. It doesn't allow you to. But you can post a picture in the Facebook group. So that's the only reason why it's there. It's also a really easy way to contact me if you wanted to so that we can touch base, ask me questions without there being 3,000 people that you're worried about reading it. So I'm just going to dry that again because I don't want to smudge it and get rid of it when I put the next layer on. What I think I'm actually going to do is once I've dried this, I'm going to put a layer of gold on, dry that, and then I will put plain white. Okay, so I'll be back soon. Okay, we are dry. Now I think the absolute most difficult thing that I had to learn about gel printing is the layers. So while you're looking at this and you think, oh that's looking quite good, what you've got to remember is it's completely different of how it's actually going to print. This side is what you're going to see printed. So you've really got to work backwards, which can be quite difficult to think about, to be fair. And I will, if you would like to see it, I've done a book this thick. It's got about 70. I haven't quite finished it. But it's got 70 gel prints that I have done that when I was learning. And there's collage. There's collage gel prints, there's mixed media, there's all sorts in there. Now I'm just, the touch that you need as well, I am not putting any pressure on there. I am simply letting the brayer do all the work. So there you go, there's a gold layer. And I'm now going to dry that. I'll just show you the other side, even though it's quite difficult to see. See how different that is to that which is quite unfortunate because usually you do this side and you think oh, that's looking fantastic and it doesn't come out like that at all <laughs> that's okay okay I'll pause this try it and come back okay we are ready for the final layer so try not to go too slap happy with the white this time but you do want a reasonable amount of paint for that last pull layer is what I call it uh, reason being that is going to re-wet all of these layers together so that they all lift up once dried onto the paper. You will notice if you don't use a white or a near white layer to do your pull, final pull, um, or like I say, learning experiences that I have done through ERA, you will notice that it can really change the colour of your print and the paints that you've used. So if I put black on the back of this, you would get a totally different result. So I usually, as a rule of thumb, use the white. Now, where has my card gone? Quickly, quickly, before that dries. Oh my goodness, here we are. Okay, so we're just going to pop that on there, make sure we've gone right to the edges with our border. Like I say, this is a 9 by 12 gel print, so it is a fantastic size to use for A4 so that you can print right to the edges and then you can do what you want with it. 
um, that art journal of gel printing that I was talking about I would be more than happy to show you guys that if there's much interest just it's got 70 different versions of what's possible with a gel print I'm also quite happy to do some more gel printing tutorials if there's enough interest uh, but my my channel is meant to be junk journaling so we'll see how that goes right I'm going to give this a really good dry I don't want anything left on my gel print after I've done other than these borders are going to be there so good five minutes making sure that that is completely dry okay all dry and as I said in my last tutorial I always like to flip it over particularly with a lighter weight paper so if you're just using copy paper because you want a gel print that's just a little bit thinner for a page in a journal I recommend you always turn it over because the lighter papers are more likely to rip when you pull them off not so much the 200 GSM which I'm using now I did get a bit impatient I did only dry it for about two minutes but most of it's come off see how different that is to what we were looking at and there you go so this is your finished result you have some nice shiny gold in there I'm sorry about the lighting I always know that daylight is better but there you go a really interesting gel plated printed piece of paper look how pretty that will look with that guy there and you can just make 10 of these and put them all in your journal and you've got a color coordinated theme so you can use any color that you want to do this um, I will show you that see how this has come out white here that's because that wasn't quite dry and that is uh, one of the second layers but on the back of my jelly plate putting the next one down these bits added to it are going to look absolutely stunning do not be afraid of leaving grungy stuff on your plate I do it all the time and I love the result this is my third gel print now and I can still see that texture that I was telling you about from a new gel plate so it will eventually not do this texture in here anymore where the paint almost looks like it's separating like water would on a plastic surface but for now I'm quite happy with the texture that it's giving me I think it's quite pretty okay so there you go there's another gel printing technique I hope you're gonna give that one a go put it in your journals like I said I'd love to see it if you do so please jump on the Facebook page uh, and join and just a really small group at the moment there's only about 13 of us kind of like it like that but really helpful supportive bunch of uh, ladies on there that will help you out just as much as I will when you're on there okay so till next time let me know what you want to see <laughs> bye for now